to Mike Chank Waifu Waifu. Check waifu waifu Tell Is that you? What's happening bro there? This is episode 250 250 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu As always It's brought to you by Patreon Patreon.com Slash Mike Check Waifu Waifu Is where you can get early access To the video version of the podcast It's where you can get access to on exclusive podcast The After Story Access to Take Talks And Mike Check Mangas And other exclusive content over on Patreon. This podcast is brought to you by the Patreon producers. Christian, the archivist, Rob from Dad Needs to Talk Podcast, Saphir, Go, D, Dre, Johnny from Show Go High, Ken the Pro from Chaotic Culture, explicitly, all for one Matt, Monique Williams, Nachi, Simi Sensei, Frozen, Rob Stone, and T Money Fingers. Welcome back, T Money Fingers. Thank you so much for producing this and many other episodes of the podcast. We couldn't do it without y'all. We appreciate y'all so very much. Episode 250. Mike Check Waifu Waifu is the anime podcast is brought to you every Tuesday at 930 AM CT. April 28th, uh, a week from, uh, a little less than a week from where you're hearing this. April 28th is our live episode. It's Mike Check Live 7, 8. I don't, I, I don't know the exact number, but it, it's Mike Check Live. This is where we go live on YouTube on Sunday at 1030 Central, uh, where we bring our live anime podcast to you. A bunch of great discussions has always take place there. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Mike Check Waifu Waifu. We appreciate you for joining us there. Shout out to everybody that like and subscribe and comment. Um, we appreciate you. Um, this is an interesting week this week. This week is cut week for Mike Check yeah. Waifu Waifu. We know that most people do the three episode rule when it comes to anime. You watch three episodes and you, and you cut. Last week, or the, for the past two weeks, we gave you the spring anime start. We gave you the first episodes of a lot of new stuff. We created a list. Um, and now for most of those, they're on episode threes. So now it's time to chop that list down. If you need to chop the list down, and, and we're going to discuss that here. And... A few other topics I want to discuss too when it comes to this spring season. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that. But before we get into that, tell how you feeling. I was just telling Polo today specifically has been a long day, but this week has been a good week. It's been a good week for me. But uh, today we went to Houston for a vet fest, which was uh, fun. But uh, it, you know, it, it was a, it was a, a nice little thick week. The Apollo doing amazing in school. Um, they basically already guarantee he he. I mean, I guess I don't, I don't know how that work. But second grade, he passed already. You know, straight A's. He they they prepping him for his next teacher. Um, cool. Uh, the daughters are doing well as well. They they talk so well. It's beautiful. I just love you know. I love my kids growing up the way they do. But it's been a good week seeing all the different experiences they have. Um, but uh. Basically, this week has been been smooth selling for me, chilling. Um, I did watch uh, a new anime that I'm going to bring up that I actually am going to recommend to Polo. Because um, I think I think we're going to like this one a lot. Don't look at my um, don't look at my stuff. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's, it's been a good week. And also, I want to say this before uh, it slips my mind. I'm feeling this look, Polo, with the with the hoodie and the, uh, the, the do rag on. That's clean. <laughs> Yeah, I had to. It's, it's hoodie polo night because I, I got a lot to say today. Polo, what's happening with you, bro? Uh not a lot, man. Not a whole lot. Um, I'm interested to see what this new anime is, but I, I do want to give. Speaking to kids, I do want to give a special shout out to uh, Dad needs to talk. One of the Patreon producers in our in our podcasting cohort. Shout out to Dad needs to talk. He dropped a, a new episode of his podcast, and his uh his little girls just joined soccer. They made a soccer team. And they had their first game. So I wanted to give a special shout out to Dad Needs to Talk and his, and his young ladies. Um, so shout out to them. Great episode, by the way, Dad Needs to Talk. Make sure you guys check out Dad Needs to Talk podcast. His, his link is always down below. So 
check it out. It's, it's it's a good it's a great podcast, great solo podcast done by him. I don't know how he could do it for an hour. That shit that yeah. shit's hard, but he does it. So it's got to be therapeutic. It for sure, for sure. Okay, um, now you know what? Let's just do episode of the week. Let's do episode of the week, and then we can get into the the, the crux of things because I I got a lot to say. So, so what was your episode of the week? I'm relying on. Can can you go first? Because I'm relying on you to pick something, and I feel like if you don't pick what I need, and I have to change my answer. Uh, jellyfish can't swim at night. My episode of the week this week. This this episode was extremely emotional for me. I loved the way it was shot and the story that was told within it. It was a, these cast of characters are phenomenal. Jellyfish can't swim at night. What a it was a wonderful episode. I, w- I was getting ready to post about it on our Mike Check Wife Wife. Make sure you join our Discord. Mike Check Wife Wife Food Forum. But I just like I gotta save it. This episode was spectacular for me. I hate episode three weeks because I feel like you always have like it's not a heat week, right? Mm-mm. Heat week is normally like episode six. Right. But I had a couple episodes I thought were really good. <laughs> and I'm sorry because I wanted you to pick one of them. Um so I'm gonna go with the one that's kind of an outlier, one that I'm I'm really speaking for right now this season. Uh go go loser ranger, bro. Okay. I love that show. Um great episode great episode this week. And it could be that I'm a um I'm like a anti hero underdog kind of kind of person. Mm-hmm. But I'm loving this show so far, man. And uh I'm a little hurt after this episode. <laughs> I'm a little hurt. I ain't gonna oh, really? lie to you. Yeah, because I'm hoping that what what they did ain't ain't true. But if it is, and I'm, I actually like it even more. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's dope. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a popular one for that uh, for this season for sure. I'm surprised because um, I haven't seen one talking about it, but I ain't also haven't been looking, so I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I I mean, listen, <laughs> let's get into it. I was I spent a little bit of time on Twitter today. I try to I I noticed what I noticed was that throughout the week the. Um, I guess it's a little behind the sauce, so forgive me. But what I do is I schedule tweets throughout the week when I upload the podcast so I don't have to get on Twitter. Unfortunately, the tweets I schedule were too long, and Elon obviously don't tell you that if it's too long, even if you have the, the fucking bullshit premium they, 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 they uh, sell you, you can't schedule a, a longer than 250 tweet or whatever character tweet. So I scheduled them. They were scheduled. They were in the list, and they just never dropped. So I'm like, damn, it, it never dropped. Uh-huh. I got, we got, I did nothing on on <laughs> on Twitter this week. I'm like, fuck. So I get on there and I'm scrolling, and the first thing I see is somebody talking about somebody comparing. And this is again, oh, and this is these are these are our friends. These are our homies. Like I love these people to death. And from from but from time to time, we can get a little crazy now. It starts with this. Somebody posted about um, uh, Windbreaker being what Tokyo Avengers should have been without the crying ass Takamichi. I hate, right. For one, uh, we were with most of our cohorts and the crying of Tokyo Avengers has never been the fucking problem. It's never been about Takamichi and his crying ever because of, I mean, honestly. It's, it's what his character is written to be. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's just not, that, not just that, it's it's honestly the only qualifying benefit of the show, in my personal opinion, is the fact that he has character enough to know that he's not capable. And it's 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 a that part of the story is great. The thing about Tokyo Avengers that we don't like, or at least for me personally, I think you said the same thing. So forgive me if I'm speaking wrongly uh, for you, but it was the fact that it's repetitive. It's just repetitive. Yeah. Over the same shit over and over and over. And it get it gets old. It gets so that- old. And that's exactly it. It, it. it has this nice bag, bro. And it mm-hmm. just sits in it. And you know how they say you getting in your bag and you, you killing it. But they sit in that same bag for so long because, to be fair, Tokyo Avengers was extremely refreshing when it first came. Absolutely. Um, it. But that, that formula got old extremely fast. And it so, might be our fault for reading ahead and, you know, and, and, and seeing. Because I, I guess season two was, I mean, we know what season two was. We, we read it. But it stays there. It literally stays there for like 60, fuck, 70, 80 chapters or whatever the fuck it is. It's a, it's annoying. It's but, find the problem, try and solve the problem, get into a fight, yeah. cry, friend comes and save you, repeat. It's rinse and repeat over and over and over. It's a cycle that never ends with that particular show. And it's not much growth within anybody else but Takamichi. 
and that's kind of boring to me. It's just boring. So I digress. That's not the important part. Tokyo Revengers is still a mad decent show. It's, I, I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it's nothing on Windbreaker. Now, I say that to say, even though it's only three episodes of Windbreaker, Windbreaker is 20 times better than Tokyo Revengers. Now, what I've also been seeing is a bunch of people saying you can't compare Windbreaker to Tokyo Revengers. And yeah. that is <laughs> that is the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. And people say we make and people say we make uh think pieces. No, 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 no. What internet what Twitter did about Tokyo comparing Tokyo Revengers and Windbreaker was outrageous. It was so many oh, but the characters and the plots and the star and the blah 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 blah. It stopped because of what I said. And the only person, the only people I should say that made sense when it came to to why you can't compare it or why you shouldn't or or don't do it is Panda. Shout out to Panda and Rob J. Rob J, I get his points, but he was also reaching like Wimby when it came to <laughs> when it came to the fact that you can't compare Tokyo Revengers to, to Windbreaker because you can. It's like if you take away the fights. In Tokyo Revengers and Windbreaker, if you take away the, the quote unquote gain activity or delinquency or whatever, if you take away, um, yeah, if you take away those two things in, in high school, in their high school kids, if you take away those three things in particular, 85% of the show is nothing on both shows. Those are the three things that they share. And if you remove three of those things, what is the show? It's not, it's not really. It's not really a show at that point. So with that, you can compare the shows. With that thought process being said, you can fucking compare these shows. It's it's and what's crazy is that I mean you can honestly compare anything. And and mind you, I don't go around comparing shows all the time. We definitely don't do that. But hearing somebody say, especially that people that talk about anime, that some people just like us, this is a a sweet hobby that we love. We talk about anime all the time. Y'all compare a lot of shit. Y'all compare so Absolutely. much different shit all the time. So just because it's something that you don't want to be compared to something else that you like, so because you like Tokyo Avengers, you don't want Windbreaker that is 20 times better than Tokyo Avengers to be compared because then that means you're like, oh shit, Tokyo Avengers ain't as good as Windbreaker. Let's not compare them. Is is crazy to me. It's just wild. Yeah. It's just wild. But Panda, to go to Panda Point, what she said was, I mean, yeah, the only thing they have is those three things, but there are so many other delinquent shows that is closer to Windbreaker that you can compare to than Tokyo Avengers. Right. That I get more. That I understand completely. I'm like, ah, okay, that makes much more sense than the rest of this stuff I hear because all I'm getting, all I'm seeing now is a bunch of think pieces about why Takamichi and Sakara is so different and blah, 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 and the motives and then... They're, they're making these, they're creating these think pieces about the two characters that are completely different in the plot. Like, no shit, they're different. Uh, obviously, they're different. It's two different stories. But even if you go to any list and you look at the first recommended anime that's on Windbreaker, it's Tokyo Avengers. It, it can be compared. We got to stop these Wimby's levels of reaching when it comes to not comparing <laughs> things because that's insane. Like, the reaching was crazy. And like, people say we make think pieces. No, 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 no. It was absolutely outrageous. I want to go to somebody who tweeted that made a lot of sense. Um, uh, 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 is this a, is this antagonist here? It should have been. <laughs> it should have been because I and I know I don't know people are gonna be like and, and Rob J is funny as fuck. I think Rob J understands like this a lot better than most people. But uh, Rambo Junior says, "Man, he because I responded to Rob J tweet. Rob J said, "Sorry, Rob J, to put you on blast. I know you don't really mind, so that's why I'm doing it." Also, can we just not bring up Tokyo Avengers when talking about Windbreaker? I don't think the two are comparable, really. And I put question mark, question mark, they are. And then Rambo Jr. 90 replied and said, man, it's all shits and giggles. I don't know. I don't think people really are comparing it outside of the high school gangs versus, uh, versus high school gangs. But to be honest, it's all a surface level comparison, which can still be compared. What a fucking bar. Like, it's all surface level. Surface like you. It is. You cannot compare golf and football. You cannot compare uh, an, uh, a Mecca to a slice of life. But what you can do is compare two delinquent high school gang on gang violent anime to get like you can compare them. And again, just because of the plots and the scenarios and situations are different, I don't mean that they're not comparable. So I say all that to say 
You can even compare apples to oranges, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> They're both fruit. <laughs> They're both fruit. <laughs> so we got to stop reaching. There's there's no reason to only go think piece when it when it when it helps an anime that you like that isn't as great as another anime. There's no reason yeah. for that. Like and even even talking about comparisons, like Polo got me in a slice of life. Let's be real here. And even if you, we shouldn't necessarily be comparing co-hosts, but if you compare Polo to myself, we're going to like different things, give you different things. People are going to side with one or the other over the other for specific reasons. If we talk about, like you said, Mecca and Slice of Life, they're both still anime. Art styles might be extremely similar, might have similar moments that cross over, but the core purpose of them might be different. If we're talking about comparing the core purpose, then yeah, that might be a little bit harder to... Uh, sure. That might be a little bit harder to compare. And it's, all in, it's all in it, good fun. Like it's, right. It, we, we hear not necessarily to compare, but sometimes a comparison is going to come up, especially, let's say, what's the highest anime of the year? There's a reason that although Free Rent and Apothecary Diaries are two entirely different anime, so different. two entirely different kind of styles that they were compared in terms of the quality that they put out, right? Mm-hmm. We can, we, they were compared in terms of the story that they put out. You know we, what I mean? We compare, we com- me and you compare stuff all the time. Speaks about anime. We compare shit all the time. Just Mm -hmm. you you can't be selective or you can't be, I I won't say gatekeeping, but it's you can't be weirdly protective or more more overprotective or or, yeah, with certain shit just because it's your shit. You know what I'm saying? It's that's really the moral of the story. It's not really an antagonist because it really didn't make me that mad. I just figured like we it's you we gotta we gotta clear that up. Like it's it's silly to think that they can't be compared because you most certainly can, like most certainly can, like. It's it's the it's one of the easiest comparisons you can make, probably. The dude that we <laughs> see in this ep- in this episode that our MC get into a, a altercation with, bro. Uh, <laughs> come on, come I'm on. Even- he is literally he's literally a copy and paste of a character from Tokyo Avengers at this point. You know, I what would I mean? understand. I would understand if if we only try to compare like one character to one character right it's it's literally the crux of the sh- it's 85 percent of what both shows are like you got the one dude that's in here like crying and screaming and, and talking to sakura i'm not comparing that shit to demon slayer even though it's, it's, it's like zanetsu he 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 mad zanetsu vibes but you i mean like i'm not gonna you can't compare those two probably but guess what they're kind of comparable still and right that's, and that's me taking taking a page from y'all book and, and, and getting that Dominique Wilkins reach, but I just, I just <laughs> think it's, <laughs> I just think it's insane. And then speaking of comparison, I know you said you watched something new. I read something. I wouldn't say new, mm. but I read something that we both started years ago, years ago. Can you take a guess at what it is? We both started this years ago. Uh, what's that show called? No. Uh, Kaji Sama Love Before. Not a show. It ain't even a show yet? <clears throat> and we both started reading it years ago. We both started reading it years ago. No guess. What, what is that? The player who can't level up. Oh, the, uh, the Mawa. The Mawa. So yeah. Speaking of comparison, what a segue. I caught up. I was on chapter 21 when we last left off. I yeah. caught up and read up to 141 chapters. That must have been crazy. It was wild because I accidentally stayed up until four o'clock in the morning last night reading this shit. Or this morning, I guess you could say. It, it's fuck. You want to talk about compare? This is a solo leveling as fuck. <laughs> like it it's, is like right there. It's right there. Like it's unbelievable, almost unapologetically solo leveling. But. That's- that's crazy, but I mean, it's probably fire then. But I will say this: in the ways that is different, it's different in the way that feels so good. It's so fucking clean. It's so I mean, like unbelievably good. And because it's, um, I'm, I'm not gonna spoil it because I, I know you, I know you you can read in in the week and catch up with no problem. So I would love right. if you could. It is unbelievably good because of the way it's. They have a system. Um, essentially it's this guy who, who can't level up. He's level one in the world where people can level up almost instantly, uh, endlessly. He, (laughs) 
he gets into a situation to where he gets the power of these things called egos and egos are are uh are like gear basically he has the he, he ended up becoming the, having the ability to absorb egos and <laughs> which is essentially a rise but i digress he absorbs the egos of of the demon king uh, the king of all demons and the king of all angels and he used both both of these swords together in tandem and what it does is it it gives him the ability to talk to these two entities or these two egos at the same time and i love the way it do it because when when the demon when the demon king is talking his name he named him lou when lou is talking it's like this black border around when you're reading it it's, it's you could tell that it's him talking and when it's the angel ellie it's like these these sparkly bits around it and he gets a piece of gear that gets stars around it that's like a, a like a little childish piece of uh, person and it it's fucking phenomenal the story is great it just got to a wild wild uh um climax, climax. or, a, tar- or yeah. a turning point essentially in this um again i'm not going to spoil it but he learns who he is basically and it is it's fucking insane Shout out to Crystal because I saw it on Crystal's Annie list. I'm like, oh shit, I forgot we was reading that. Why did we stop? This it was good. That's how he eat right here, man. I swear I to eat, God, that's how he eat. Crystal feeds me good. So I'm, I'm telling like, you. I'm remembering because I remember us reading it and that's probably how she started reading it too. Let us know, Crystal. But we was reading it and I'm like, damn, why did we stop? It was actually really good. I pull up my, you know, my little reader and I go through and I'm reading. I'm like, fuck, this shit is, it's so Crazy. good. It's so like, it's beautiful. Um, there is a uh, there's a moment that happens <laughs> where he's fighting and 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 a, a, a girl's like you know I want to come with you I want to help you out with this he's like see I, I thanks I appreciate it but you you can't come with me because you at least has to be this strong and he does a move and it's fucking insane it's like it's so good <laughs> it's so good you have to be at least this strong sets off a tactical nuke <laughs> essentially. <laughs> Essentially, it's it's a phenomenal series. The player who can't level up is Amawa, um, who that kind of went through a lot, like honestly. And they changed artists within uh, like midway through it. It's, it's very, very crazy, but really, really, really good so far. And it's uh, it's on a hundred chapter one hundred and forty one was the most recent. And you end at one nineteen. No, I caught up. <laughs> oh, you caught all the way up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Sheesh, man. All right, well, though. I got some reading to do. It's going to take me like two seconds. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so good. What I, You know what I did, though? What was that, bro? Um, I just put it on my computer, and I, you know when you can click the middle mouse button? You can have it auto-scroll down. Mm-hmm. I just had it auto-scrolling down, so like, pseudo-fast, and was just sitting, chilling back, rela- relaxing, and just watching like it go. Just watching some anime. Yep, yep. <laughs> the, the problem with that, though, is that I don't know if it was just my eyes, but everything started doing that. Like when I would look anywhere else, everything oh, would yeah. start to scroll. It fucked up my vision so bad. Like I was, a little mini optical illusion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you expect to see it scroll? Exactly. So I was like, fuck. I was fucked. My mind was fucked up for like three three hours. So I'm like, damn, everything was like fucking scrolling right now. But I told Lo about to go experiment on somebody. He about to go see if it worked <laughs> on them too. It was crazy. All right, but what did you watch that was new? Bro. Now we we I said I was just telling you I could not find this anime on a site that shall not be named. Mm. I found it. Yada Garasu, the Raven does not choose his master. No, I haven't. Okay. Um. So now I only watched the first episode, mm. but hear me out on this, cause uh, here's what I'm feeling, bro. It's it's not giving apothecary diary vibes. But it, it it's set in like a similar period. Now, what I find extremely interesting about this is that they're they're separated into houses um, of of women who are essentially meant to marry the lord of of this uh, of this lordship or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And essentially, um, we start off with the women being given names. And they're all like Asian women, and then there's this one European-looking woman, uh, and they gave her the name Asebi, which the name is an insult, meaning that she is the one who poisons horses. 
Um, so basically, they're saying that if the husband chooses, or if the, the if he if she's chosen as the one to marry to the Lord, uh, essentially she will be poisoning him by who she is or whatever, right? Definitely wasn't what J Cole was talking about. What's it called? Uh, Yadagasru, Yadagarasu, the Raven does not choose his master. This is the first episode, by the way. So if he was talking about like the most recent episode, it's on episode three. No, no, no. He posted the. I thought he posted it about the first episode, but is it is the dude a raven like an actual bird, like the character? I haven't seen that yet, but they say that he they believe he's a kinu, which would be the golden raven. So he's supposed to be like the leader, the leading raven of of the community or whatever. Okay. So there are people who turn into ravens in this show, which is like that. the the magical part outside of it. But I actually think this is one of those shows we we talked about it. Um, what was it called on? Um, it was a show on Netflix that we watched, but where they didn't have to add the magical concept of it, and it would probably be better without it. Oh, um, uh, what? what it, all right, I know exactly what it is. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the principle is is that I'm very intrigued by it, but the first episode was very meh. Mm. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm intrigued because I can see where it's going. I can I I could see me being dragged into this and being like, "Yo, this is crazy." And I feel like with the 20 episodes it's going to have, 20 uh it's going to actually be pretty solid. Yeah. Um now I'm saying this because uh, I plan on being fully caught up with this cuz I didn't even realize it, that I could find on the site that shall not be named until literally earlier today. Um and as Polo know I've been gone for a decent part of the day so I didn't get right. to actually catch up on this one specifically. But uh the way that this this episode introduced itself was was it was like I said, it was a little meh, but I'm very interested in where the world and how these people are building it up because it seems like it's going to be an anime that's very strategically um, based. Like mm. there's a lot of uh, background movements. It's very political heavy, and by politics I mean that like this is conversations amongst the people moving things and pieces uh, forward. That'll so work. I'm actually I'm actually extremely interested in this anime because of that. Now the current rating is what a sixty one percent average oh, score. No, um, but I don't know. I, I I feel like like I said, it was kind of meh for the first episode, but I feel like there was something in the background that was very intriguing that that kept me like drawn in, and it is the strategy part of it. Where it seems like these characters are not going to be playing little petty bullshit games. That this is going to be like they for real. Like this is this is they're trying to plot, and it seems like they're trying to start a war from the beginning just by how they're getting these women organized. Which they do talk a little bit about that in the beginning. But yes, um, I'm recommending it to you, Polo, because I want to see uh, if this is one of those that's actually worth it for us to talk about. Can you send me the link to it because I can't find it nowhere. Like uh, the uh, the Annie List link, I told you, bro. Oh, Annie List? Yeah, I, I don't see it on Annie List anywhere. All right, hold up, bro. I got you. I got you. I've been looking the whole time. <laughs> oh no, I found it. I found it. I found it. All right, it's it's it. spelled funny. Yeah, yeah, the girl too. That name is a little hard to spell. Yeah, I tried to search. I definitely spelled that wrong. Um, yeah. Oh, I also watched Viral Hit. Nah. <laughs> yeah, so hear me out. Viral hit is not good. Nah, bro. Uh, it's not. That's not it. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know what today is. <laughs> it's, it's real bad. But <laughs> but I will say this. <laughs> kind of interesting, almost. Almost. It's, it's interesting because it's like, it's really a show that you're watching and you're saying, yo, WTF. I actually have a reason to use WTF now. Um, and it's Thanks. literally that show. <laughs> For real. First and foremost, I'm I'm dropping it. But I'm kinda also yeah. I'm kinda also <laughs> curious, so I might just set it as paused, forget about it and never pick it up again. But maybe I'll go back to when it's when it's done just to fucking see what it turns out to be. But it was a bad, bad first episode. I mean from animation to the so characters to everything was bad about it's, it. It's because it's basically like what all CGI, uh, and and it's not like particularly mm. great. It's not it's not like the three D shaded CGI. No, no, well. no. I feel like it looks like that. Maybe just some parts. It's really but just either stiff. way. The second episode, uh, 
it was more of the first, but leaning leaning into the idea now because they have a, this thing that works. Yeah, I'm. It's, no, thank it, you. It, it did not get better. Uh, <laughs> I, I believe promise it. you, it, it did not get better. Um, I'll watch the third episode when it comes out, but uh, it will it, it'll probably end up on the drop list. Um, because I, I can't see myself coming back and watching it now. If you come back and watch it, let me know. But I'm gonna watch the pause, I'm a, it's gonna be in that pause section of my ending list for probably six years, but it was. <laughs> It was definitely WTF moment. That's that's what it is. That's all it is. Is is literally a WTF show. <laughs> so I'm I'm very surprised that you actually uh, picked that one up. Yeah, I, I tried it. I really did. All right, now to go to the um, segue, perfect segue. Uh, cut week. Let's decide we'll be cutting this week. Now, I should tell a text message because I wanted to schedule. This <sighs> And what he sent me back, I <laughs> I was blown back by. I just don't. It was it. It honestly, <laughs> when I say distrust, and yes, I meant distrust because it, it honestly it it's so easy. We on two different sides of the fence here. It's so easy for me to recommend this particular show to people only because of the feel good feel it has. I even love what happened this recent episode. That it was kind of sad at the same time. It was. Very emotional, um, but it was. Um, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you speak on it. What show did you tell me you were dropping this week? <laughs> the and show the I told him. Show, don't forget that part. I. Ain't, it's not the only show. Well, the only show outside of the banished one. Uh, what what's, what's this joint? Uh, the grandpa and grandma joint. Oh my goodness. Um, now, also, just hear me out. This was by this was only after episode two. I I'll be real. After watching episode one and two, episode one was like, oh, this is this could be interesting. Episode two was like, eh. I felt nothing for episode two. Episode three, I actually felt something for. Oh, um, okay. So what I what I it had said, emotional. what I what I told you was before I watched episode three. Of course. And that was how I stood at that point. I was like, yeah, no. I don't care about this show. Um, I don't care to watch this show, and I, I know I'm not going to care to watch this show. Crazy. Episode three gave me some more, um, but if I didn't see this week to week, I would be okay. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. It's so I good. would be okay, bro. It's crazy. Uh, it's I'm, so okay. For the first time, ever, and, and this is the only person I feel like I can tell this to, and I will say this about, and y'all can believe me or not, but tell is wrong. Um, and y'all know how I feel about doing that. It's rare that tell is I could I feel like anybody is wrong, but tell is actually wrong. Grandpa and grandpa, grandma and grandpa turn young again is the fucking sweetest. He like, didn't even say the name right. It's, it's like it's the it's sweetest. Like, it's the, I just said it reverse, but I digress. I know, I'm it's just the like sweetest it. show ever with this emotional like undertone to it that has the comedic beats that is just so adorable. It's so adorable. And now it could it could be because I love to see long lasting love and that and that is just it's just the most adorable thing ever from a couple that grew up in a time that's fucking that's so old long ago. They've been married for fifty plus years. So to see them kind of like get to live their life again is sweet. And this most recent episode kind of hurt because it's like it's there's different implications now to what was going on with them. And it's quite sad. Or it wasn't sad. It was it was sweet, sad, right? Like it almost kind of like a happy sad. It was. I really enjoyed, it, especially the pacing of this episode was phenomenal. I thought it went by so, so fast. So not, not and not not to cut you off, bro. Because yeah, like good. I think the overall story of this show, I actually do really enjoy. Um, all the moments when they talk about the tree, like when we find out about uh, the hourglass and stuff like that. All of these things to me, I think when it comes to that part, you know what I mean? We talked about the ley lines before when they kind of set it up to where that we know that there's going to be more in the future and that puts it in a certain direction. And they're just kind of giving you hints at it without dropping, dropping the whole load at once. Right. I think that they're doing a good job at leading that story. But I'm going to be real. I hate like the slice of life bits of this outside of that. 
Um, I hated all of the everybody crushing on them because they're young again. To me, I'm just like, so what? But the part when it was like, oh, wait, we're young. We get to experience like to being together as young people. And I'm just like, yo, I love that moment. Which is but 95% it's like, of the show. But it is not 95% of the show. The other percent was them trying to compete in sports. And I was like, this is stupid. I want to see y'all like, I don't what know, you, love each other. What you were <laughs> reacting to was literally the first episode of people seeing them for the first fucking time. That's understandable, bro. That's And then can't. the second episode and then the even no, this episode, this, this there was episode. parts of this episode that was just like, okay. Nobody like, did that in the second episode. It was, it was it was cute for them to go to the market that was and a good one. I like being that. nervous <laughs> about uh that was so you know, she she's young looking and 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 that that was cute but it's also like bro that's your wife you know what I mean like you've been with her for sixty years stop acting like a a, a punk and just say nah, yeah this is my wife not, I, but I, I get it I, that's not how I know, it went I, don't you tell I understand these people that's that not I understand that's not how it went but I'm telling you that's how I felt I felt like bro. That's your wife, man. Oh, like I get what you're trying it, to do. I get you're trying to be considerate of her feelings mm-hmm. and how she might be seen out here. She don't. You should know your wife after sixty years. It's, no, it's you, not about that. It's the embarrassment. Bro, it's the embarrassment of something like that. It's, it it ain't got nothing. I, just, I get the embarrassment. I get the embarrassment. I get the idea. That's his wife. He know his wife ain't no twenty year old, and he's he eighty. He know the he know the deal. That's all I'm saying, bro. He knows the deal. <laughs> it's it's the thought anybody would have if they have any consideration for anybody. Period. Straight up. It's it's it's, it's a fact. It's it, if you have any consideration for anybody else, self, then that it, it makes sense. Cause like, okay, you're in public. You're fucking oh eighty. God. You got this whole sugar daddy look going yeah. on. It'd be yeah. it'd be super fucking weird for somebody uh-huh. to be like, you know, hey, this is my so, husband. Like, it, so. It, Go ahead. I'm not trying to disagree with you too much, but hear me out. On consideration, this is th- that was his self consideration for her. Okay, that's he it. Could, he should have considered exactly what she said to him before he even got to that point. She don't care about none of that other than being called that. That's his wife. That's and, what she cared. That's what that's, she cared about. And that's, that's consideration. Great. Consideration On goes both. further than just that part. But it's, it takes two. It, it, it was a two person consideration thing. It wasn't just one person. To think of it only from her perspective is selfish, and from his perspective was also for him to think about it in her perspective was also unselfish as well. They're both two unselfish people, and that's what they're trying to. D- that's what they're trying to showcase. You gotta ask her, bro. I don't know. Show. I'm, just, I'm just going. It's great. I'm just going. It's I understand because I, I, I look. I'm gonna be real with you as a as a husband, um, and as a as an only child. Because Polo grew up in a in a household with with siblings. I did not have any other than uh, having to acquire Polo and other <laughs> you know siblings outside the household. Yeah. Uh, consideration was not. It, I'm not gonna say consideration because I did have cousins and whatnot to consider, but uh, I had to learn how to consider people. So me having a wife, I had to learn that okay, yes, I'm being considerate in Montel's way, but it ain't necessarily me actually being considerate in Monique's way. Right. So that's all I'm saying. I'm saying that to me as a husband now, I'm just like, hey, yo, baby, you cool with this or do you not want this? She be like, yeah, that's this is exactly what I want. I'm like, all right, that's what you get. And I, I get that. The I, general, I'm just saying. the general concept is understandable, is what I'm saying. The general yeah. concept of it is understandable of why he would think, okay, this is probably embarrassing for her to yeah. see. You know, I'm seem like a, a, you know, I agree. I'm just with this old man for money or something. You know, it's some weird thought that people would have in this day and age, I guess. So it was, I, it was, but that was such a fucking, it was so cute. It's such a great beautiful. Movie. I think their relationship is beautiful, bro. Yes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ever trying to take that away from that. I think their relationship is beautiful. I just think that everything else makes me not want to watch the show. I ain't going to lie to you. What's everything else? The, the past, because that's also great. That, but this episode wasn't like episode two and it wasn't like episode one. It was better than both of those episodes. Episode two it and had, three both have moments of where they dive into their past. Right, how they and met. those moments are solid. It's the the in between stuff, the fluff of like how the family is is thinking, and that's what episode one. Family thinking they cute. That's that's weird. That was adorable. Uh, it's not that shit is weird, bro. That that I, I and, almost but it was never, it off, but man. it was never taken as a as a serious undertone, though. It, it was never taken as. Was, I don't think it was either, bro. I'm not saying it was. Just I'm like just how we saying. had to tell Rob about how the Mission Yosa Core family isn't as creepy as he think that. That's how this felt. It just felt mm-hmm. like a a silly service level. Oh, you guys were so like, 
my mom was pretty. She is pretty. Like I, I could say that. You know, same yeah. same thing with my grandmother. My grandmother was beautiful. You know, that's like not, it's that's not that's not uh, a his, problem his to say. Was blushing and crushing, and that's that's, <laughs> not too, much and crushing. that's too much for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was supposed to be interpreted as that. I guess, but I, 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 just, I, I, I just was like, I, I don't it. like I that. Get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, th- that was one you was going to cut. Is it still cut? I don't I don't know, bro. I, I feel like I'm not going to cut it because this episode, I, I really do enjoy their relationship. Like, that's not that's not a fault. Like, I think the relationship is really good. But I feel like if if it goes back to like the the goofy because that's it's, that's what it's going to be it's going to go back to the goofiness and that's not what i care about for this that's not what i care about for this i want to see these old ass people love each other bro yeah. i want to see these old people experience this 60 year relationship as young people and like when they was scared to hold hands in public bro i want i want that <laughs> i want i want these 80 year old people and 20 year old buddies yeah. loving each other and that's I feel like I'm not gonna get as much of that as I want, and I, and you know what it is. I feel like I'm blueballing myself watching this show, and that's why I don't like it. Like, it I love could. their love. I I really do love their love. I, I'm not lying about that. It's just it's something about I I just want more of it, and I feel like I'm not getting all of that that I want. I get it. I I I, I definitely get it. If, for me, this this is probably going to be the season where I start to catch up on other shit. But for me, I mentioned that I'm not the banished from uh, the form. The banished former hero lives as he pleases is one of the worst shows I think I've ever watched. Like it is that bad. Like it it is essentially garbage. I mean, I mean, to prove it, like the general, even the general consensus, this has a 40 fucking seven on Annie list. That's real hard to do to get that low of a score on Annie list. It's a bad show. Everything from the characters to the animation is some of the worst I've seen in an anime in a very, very long time. Um, nothing is interesting about it. Nothing is intriguing. No, the story is garbage. It was bad. I, I think the best part about the banished hero lives as he pleases is the comment section of Crunchyroll. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Them motherfuckers. After the episode, I just scrolled and I couldn't finish the third episode. I just turned it off midway through. But scrolling down through the comments just watching these motherfuckers grill this show is the funniest thing ever bro it's it's so funny so i might come back to Crunchyroll just for the comments of that show but i can't there's no fucking way i would ever continue to watch this this and, is a go ahead go ahead i was just about to say and then it's it's just it's why why would i do that when there's like i could just do anything else yeah i i haven't watched a show this bad since x arm and mm. demon lord retry I'm right there with you. It's it's actually that fucking bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's that, <laughs> and, and hear me out, bro. It, why I don't understand why it's that bad. Um, me either. Other than the like, I don't. the The concept is there, and I know that. And hear me out, bro. Remember when we was given the pre the preseason like review? He was like looking yep. at the. He was like, "Yo, that's gonna be one that's on the list right there." Yeah. We, we knew it. Hundred percent. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. What's going on there? Um. The show is ugly. Yes. Uh, the even the the banished hero, he's not enjoyable. And what's sad is that every other hero that we've got this season that's in a similar position is just so much better. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, bro. This this one is is not is not it. Sadly, I feel like this one was right up our alley, and it just dropped the ball. This was a polo and tail ass anime until it just wasn't. It failed miserably. Um, another one that I didn't even try to watch the third episode for. So. Forgive me for not properly doing the three episode rule, but it's the guy's game we play. Like I just don't want to. I don't care. It's. I'm sure it wasn't good. Um, it was all conjecture and talking. It was trash. Uh, we, I'm dropping it too. I'm, I'm, see, I'm glad you watched it though, so you can have a little bit more context for the three episode rule. But it's it's up. Uh, it's horrid. It's not good whatsoever. It and again another one of those where the potential is there, but kind of from minute one. I, I kind of figured that this was going to be when I wasn't going to make it. Yeah. For sure. No. Um. Do you have another one? <laughs> uh, as of right now, <laughs> I, I actually, I think. 
The the closest one is an Arch Demon's Dilemma: How to Love Your Elf Bride, right? Oh, you don't like that one? No, I I do like it. I'm just not I sure. And I, and I, I so there's things I love about it. I feel like it is <laughs> this, and this is one of those things where it's like it's it's good in the sense of. All the, the the aspects I like are there in terms of what the world is and the characters are, but there's just moments where it's a little slower for me, um, where it's just like, unironically, like, that like, is what I like about it—the slow pieces. It's, we, it's we more, well, yeah. It, well, what I mean by slow pieces, and I, I'm assuming this is probably still what you kind of mean, like when, um, when, like, for instance, he got his powers in this episode. And I was like, or not this powers, but he got his insignia this episode. And I was like, let's go. This is fire. Um, you know, to kind of see how these things go. Even last episode when we got the mysticism stuff, you know, low, low key spoilers, not too many spoilers. Uh, but it, it got a little slow. It, and it always gets slower. It's cute, but it's like you can pick this up a little bit. Um, him not really knowing how to interact with her. Yeah. Like, and, and that that is always nice. But I always hate the the bumbling idiot part of it because he's a genius. He's a genius. You know, he's a young. He's the youngest, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? And you know, without trying to spoil too much, but it's like I get the the social interaction is not there. 100%. So I, that's why I'm rocking with it um, because there's so much about it I do like. But but it's like I hate the bumbling idiot. And it, even though I understand the concept, it does take away or detract from it for me. I get your detraction from it, but that that is the show. When somebody hasn't and he did they didn't they say he's like older than your normal human though? No, he's just regular. Cuz I know that I know that he, he started studying magic I think when he was 7. Okay. So 7 or 8. So he's like 17 or 18. It's been 10 years. So with that being said, interacting with no one for that long. Even all actually all of his life he didn't interact with anybody because he was basically a, essentially a slave so it was, exactly so I, the whole interaction thing is different but it's different because it's only more different and more i will say understandable because again i know what you mean about the bumbling idiot nobody likes the bumbling idiot in any romance slice of life any nobody likes that but i do take into consideration that in this particular case this guy has never even talked to a girl essentially in any kind of uh facet yeah. like this let alone, let alone when he actually liked her marrying. Exactly, exactly. One that he fell in love with at first sight. So it's a little bit more understanding for me. And what I'm liking much, what I'm liking very much within this show is the slow uh, integration of his ability to be able to communicate a lot better. It's like there's moments like I was actually able to say good morning this time. Mm -hmm. And that's in the way that's kind of like piling on top of each other in the moments they have where they like super intimate and close to each other and they're talking. It's it's a very, very neat dynamic that I enjoy watching. And I know that it's not going to be for everybody. So this this is one that I'm definitely keeping on the list for sure. Week to week. I enjoy it a lot. And what I'm loving about it, though, and just hear me out. This, these are the parts I love. I love when it's the because this is this is about his social interaction we're talking about, right? Yep. I love the fact that he'll do things and he'll save people, not think anything about it. You know, he's just not trying to be, he's just not trying to have extra blood on his hands or make extra work for himself yep. with killing humans. And the people are like, oh, well, he always lets us go free, and the other ones are like very mean and they kill people. And it's like he's just like, I just didn't feel like wasting the time. And ironically. And, and it like gets him in these places and I like I love that that's the comedic beat I love um, so there are things I love about it it's just I'm not 100% sure I'm not 100% locked in on it uh, one I'm not going to watch is Astro Note it's too it's too um, chaotic for me I guess is the mm. right term Cha actually chaotic is the perfect term it's just too much going on it's the it's the it's the kind of comedy I don't like it's just it's noisy. Noisy is a perfect description, and the characters suck. So that one I'm not going to touch ever again. Uh, I'm going to drop that one. But other than that, man, my, <laughs> with that being said, my list is very short. So I'm a, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. We can give our quick rundown of our lists real quick now as they stand before we move on. Um, let me just drop Astro Note in my any list. So. Without further ado, let me just give you my list of anime. 
So I got Train to the End of the World is a week to week. Chilling in another world with my level two super cheap powers. Definitely a week to week. Love that show. I was reincarnated as a seven prince, so I can take my time perfecting my magical ability. Love that show. Remaster with a phenomenal episode. Love that one. Yeah. <laughs> Spice and Wolf. I'm absolutely loving this remake. Remaster, I, I guess you can call it, but it's literally just a remaster, not even a remake. A remaster of essentially what was out in the past. Loving that, though. Unnamed Memory, one of my favorites. Uh, Mysterious Disappearance. This one is still very, very good, albeit episode two was a little bit less my taste. Um, I'm going to binge Konosuba when it's done and dubbed. I'm going to binge Data Live 5 when it's done and dubbed. Bartender, shout out to Dad needs to talk because he, he mentioned something in the format. I didn't see it until literally later today about me mentioning how they reach in Bartender, but I absolutely love it. And what I meant by reaching is it's like Coracle No Basketball, where it's a little bit over too over dramatic in the sense of yeah. it's message i guess when it comes to these drinks it's like the whole mr perfect guy with with our bartender guy oh but what about taste it now like that kind of shit that shit was a little he was reaching. The, the old head trying to humble the young dude That's yeah all. it was it was real over the top with some of the dramatics they use when making these drinks but still like rob j said it's, it's asmr it's fucking great it's a great show oh sorry to go on that tangent but um a Condition Called Love, another phenomenal episode. This almost got my episode of the week, but I enjoyed A Jellyfish Can't Swim. And a little bit more. Week, so that's the one I was hoping you picked. I was thinking about it, but. Sheesh yeah, almighty, man. So that very, was, very good. That was crazy. So very good. Obviously, Windbreaker is a week to week. Um, The Arch Demon, we just talked about, is a week to week for me. Um, Misfit Demon King is a dubbed and done binge for me. Reincarnated as a slime season three has been fucking phenomenal. I love everything that's happening there. So that's definitely a week to week. The irregular magic high school season three. That's going to be dubbed and done because there's so much fucking dialogue in that show. I do not want to watch that sub. Uh, Kaiju number eight is probably my number one favorite show. For this season? For this. Maybe. I mean, I love this show so much. It's 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 so good for me personally. <laughs> oh. Like so wow. very fucking good so kaiju number yeah, eight is definitely week to week uh oh do y'all got a garatu I, I gotta watch that so i don't know yet jellyfish can't swim night definitely week to week it's probably the only high dive show i got on my list this week i mean this season yeah it's funny the new gate you know what i'm liking it i'm liking the new gate it's not good but i'm liking it and that i will take to my grave it's, it's not it's not but that but let's not say it's not good okay, because that's true. you're right you're right where it's different that. from like sword art it has Fair some right. good things going on bro mm -hmm. you know what i mean like there's some some very good things happening there um the quality is it, just it, it's yeah it's very if, subpar animation quality if we got better overall quality like even in terms of like motion and whatnot you know what i mean yeah. um over dramatic uh, slide shows kind of moments you know if we got actual production value yeah. in this um, I think this show would actually be over the top really good I do like where this story is headed though so far so far yeah so maybe we'll touch on that maybe on a live episode next week but Mission Yos and Core Family duh uh, that's week to week um, Duke of Death in his May season 3 that is getting dubbed and done That's that dub actually start, started today but I'm waiting until that's done um, as the uh as a reincarnated aristocrat, I'll use my appraisal skill to rise in the world. I fucking wish I could just get this all in one go. This show is spectacular. And it gets annoying that I, when it ends because I really just wanted to keep going because they go by so fast. This might be one of my favorites too. Um, Grandpa and Grandpa turn young again. I'm definitely keeping that week to week. It's only 11 episodes. Easy watch. Uh, Jobless Reincarnation Season 2 Part 2. The best show ever. I'm capping, but it's really good. It's really fucking good. And that is my list. My list isn't that big anymore. Uh, Almost actually at all. Very easy season for me. So I might be watching a bunch of new shit that I'm going to bring to y'all this particular season. So I got... All right. So Train to the End of the World. Uh, Chill Another World with my level two super cheap powers. Remonster. Uh, Reincarnated Seventh Prince. Spice and Wolf, which is my first time watching that. Uh, 
I got some that I haven't watched yet. I'm not going to talk about those until I actually get them. Unnamed Memory, which I agree with Polo, is phenomenal. Especially so this week's episode was so good, too. Oh, my God. Um, I'm going to also catch up on Sandland. I'm only watch one episode of that. That's the Akira Toriyama joint. Yep. It's actually uh, very fun, but it seems a little childish. It's just very shown and heavy. Um, I'm, so, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that one. Mysterious Disappearances. Yes. Same, same thing. Uh, a little etchy I was a little surprised with, but, you know. Hey, I'm, it's, it's sticking around because I love it. Uh, bartender, obviously. It's not edgy uh, enough. Ugh. Viral hit will get dropped. Um, I'm gonna watch the third episode oh, though, God. but viral hit will definitely get dropped. <laughs> a condition called love, phenomenal episode. Like Polo said, Windbreaker, another. To me, oh this is this gosh. is also another heat episode. Um, Arch Demon, Arch Demon's dilemma. Uh, Misfit Demon King. Uh, Slime obviously is going crazy, especially with the information we got about the forest this this week. Um, Girls band cry. Polo is not watching, um, but I will continue my watch of that. Uh, Kaiju number eight. Um, yeah, yes, yes. I'm surprised. We gotta talk about that. Why people aren't liking that one? Yes. Um, Yada Garasu, uh, which I just talked about. I watched the first episode. Um, I'm hoping the first three are good because I will drop it and tell y'all next week if it's if it's trash. Um, but the first episode was was okay enough. Jellyfish can't swim. I'm also very happy. I did not think this was gonna be a polo ass anime, oh but God, Jellyfish so can't swim is great. Um, the new gate, obviously. Um, Go Go Loser Ranger is my jam. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. It's my underdog for this season. And I hope it's absolutely fire uh, all the way to the end. Mission Yo's Akura family, Grandpa and Grandma turn young again. Uh, Reincarnated Aristocrat is like high for me right now. Um, I know it's got a little bit of the the, the wealthy giving a hand down to the poor kind of concept, but I don't care. It's real good. Oh yeah, what's um, the issue with that? And then Jobs Reincarnation. That's that's a, that's my joint. It's fire. Yes, it's so good. Um, so. You want to swing the spoiler talk and bring Kaiju number eight to us? Yes, bro. We got to. We got definitely, to. Definitely, definitely. Um, and then what else? We got anything else in there? Spoil, spoil, spoil. Uh, Kaiju number eight. Um, oh, let me not forget to add. I am still watching Sukumichi Moonlit Fantasy. Still fucking phenomenal. I'm still enjoying that very much. So that's I definitely got, still uh, there. And I, I, I'm three episodes behind on Delicious and Dungeon, and I still do have to watch that too. Oh. Stay they done separated from, from food at this point. It's all up it's it's actually getting more story oriented. It's crazy. I, I love it. I think to get pick it back up again. Now, now the food is still there. Don't take no I ain't. Of course. But they are so heavily in the world building and story right now, I'm like dying. It's crazy. So qu- question for you, Tell, before we go into break. Do you think I should watch Go Go Loser Ranger? Because the first recommendation for Go Go Loser Ranger is Love After World Domination, which is the one, the slice of life joint that I actually loved. Do you think I should to watch it? I think if you watch it and you compare it to Love After World Domination, I'm not. I'm not. It's just. It's just. That's the first recommendation that comes up when you see it. The thing. Uh, you're not gonna like it. Really? I think. I think you should try it. I. I feel like you're not gonna like it. Okay. I don't think you're gonna like it, but I I do think you're gonna at least like the main character. I think you're gonna love the main character. I don't think you're gonna like anything else about it. Okay. No, no, that's not. Yes, watch it, watch it. Oh no, you know what? I take that back. Polo, you would love it. I I actually I think that you will love it. I think it, I think it's gonna be one of those things that you you watch eight minutes and you're like, oh no, nah, I, I I like this. I actually, okay. I'm thinking about the concepts that you might like now, and I'm like, nah, you you will probably like this actually. Add it then. I'll report back next on a live episode. Yes, it is. I actually think you're gonna like it. I'm I'm thinking about it now, a hundred percent. Sweet. All right, and then we're, so so Kaiju number eight is what we're gonna spoil. A condition called love. Okay, and a condition called love. I like that. Um, you want to do remonster? <laughs> yeah, we could do remonster. Uh, we'll be right back after this.
And welcome black to episode 250 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Thank y'all so much for listening to us, for rocking with us. Shout out to everybody that came back for the spoilers. Um, So we're going to spoil Kaiju number eight. This is one that I saw going on on Twitter for the day that I was on it of people complaining it, that this show wasn't great. I'm looking everywhere like it's getting low rankings on like the uh, the anime website rankings. It's actually up to a 79 percent. But when I looked at it earlier today, it was at a 76, which was strange. So I guess the most recent episode might have bumped up to any list. But yeah. I was super confused on, on what I was the, the um, discourse, I guess what I was seeing on Twitter. I didn't dive into the discourse, so forgive me for misspeaking, but shout out to Danny to talk for clarifying for me that it's mostly people complaining that the mod, that it doesn't look like the manga or the trailer that released a year ago. It didn't look, it don't look as good as that. That is the, uh, ultimately that is the complaint of Kaiju number eight. And that's fucking, it's so stupid. It's so, it's so stupid because for one, even if, even if it don't look like the trailer, it still looks great to me. Um, but again, I, it seem it may seem like this, but we are we've never been really that much of an anime ho- like animation horse, you know. Like I don't I don't really need anything to I don't really need everything to be foldable or or a one or or wit. Like I don't need everything to be that as, as long as the story is good. I mean, we we kind of talk about this all the time. Like we we watch shit like Gate or like that don't look great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but we we still can enjoy it. So the animation really ain't that big of a deal. But in this show, it looks fucking phenomenal to me. The intro and the outro of this show is fucking spectacular. I thought they were great. They were so good. So hey, shout out to Murky for saying that the intro was average. I was surprised. I thought it was it was a good intro, really good intro, animated well, everything. It was phenomenal. It, it was very it's very Americanized, which is out. I, I kind of like because it kind of reminds me of. You know, the HBO intros that they always use and shit, which I love. Um, but everything about the show is, is fantastic from the characters to the story to where it's going. I'm I don't get it, man. I don't I don't. I, I, why would I say I don't get it? Like, I give a fuck, but it's stupid. I'm going to just say that I was expecting to come here and see people clamoring over this like they do uh, Undead on Luck. But no, it's the opposite, and that's fuck. It's baffling to me because this is twenty billion times better than that show, like so, by a lot. Already. So I don't, I don't specifically know why people aren't liking it. You know what I mean? I can only tell you why I like it. I love these characters, Absolutely. at least the main characters that we've been given so far. Episode two made me like the background characters because of how they supported our main characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved how they introduced new characters even the guy who just ran across they gave these characters presence you know yes that each character had a presence we had Intrigue. we had uh the the monster transformation and the, the our main character realizing his limitations within that 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 kind of like moment and then what he can do in those moments like this show is doing so many levels you know what i mean it's got highs and lows and and understanding already and it's kind of hard to for me to understand why people aren't liking it because I feel like it started off with a bang almost. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it's even the, the action. I, we didn't even talk about the action that's in the second episode was amazing, man! Like incredible. Yeah. Watching the and way it even looked, I felt like I was watching Attack on Titan episode one. Don't do that now. And I'm not trying to compare it, you know, because you can't be comparing, <laughs> but I'm just saying it was that moment and I was like, oof. Let me that's just not go what to, I need to see. <laughs> not right me, here. Let me just go to one of the Patreon producers, Ket the Pro. He said, this show is absolute heat. Too many people want the animation to be exactly like the manga and people are trying to compare it to AOT, which is stupid as fuck because it's nothing like AOT. Yeah, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that it, it was that. I'm not saying that it was AOT. I'm right. saying that that, that moment that it was a, it was literally that specific moment where the monster was trying to eat the girl i was like oh my god i can't do this again not i can't do another monster anime eating little kids but it was i it was it was to me that's the moment i felt that but overall no obviously i'm not comparing the two but bro this show I, like i said i don't understand why people are upset with it i, can, I know what, what we're being told here 
But to me, there's so much delivery on this show and how it's actually bringing itself and presenting itself as a something different. This is kind of fresh to me. 100%. Um, because the way that they normally do these like monster hunting kind of anime uh, outside of like, let's say, AOT or whatever, is that it's always like the the uh, Shogun uh, rural kind of like setting. Hell's and Paradise type they're, they're, they're hunting period. demons. Yeah, they're hunting demons and, and all this kind of stuff. But this show has a completely different spin on it with the Kaiju kind of take. And even the relationship you know the past relationship and trying to strive for your things it's a very shonen-esque like strive but these characters are not acting like shonen characters and i think that's also what i love about it these characters are like relatively mature about what the future is looking like and even how things are getting uh are going to go about so i don't know bro i i don't understand why this show could catch any uh flack so let me not it seems a little low during during the uh the break I'm like, let me see something. I look, I pull up my reader that I use and I typed in Kaiju number eight and I looked at the manga. She looks exactly the same. It looks exactly the same. The biggest difference between the two I see so far is the uh, the younger kid. He looks more like a, in, in the anime, he looks more more bubbly, I would say. Mm-hmm. More, uh, more innocent. And you know, in the maybe. manga, he looks like a Sasuke type of character, like a, a, a very gloomy type of super serious you know lower eyes type type character and he's not that in the anime that's the only difference i see between two but everything else looks fucking great i don't i don't maybe my it's my maybe my issue is that i try to understand the internet and that that's the biggest problem i can't try to understand these fools you can't argue with fools (laughs) and then what jay said you don't argue with fools so that's crazy uh, the show is phenomenal i thought i was gonna be like coming here and be like I'm finally with the general consensus on a, on a shonen for the first time probably ever, and it's for me. I'm not apparently. So, but it, <laughs> it's probably because it is not just a it's not a shonen acting shonen. It's not a my hero shonen. It's not a a a, a one piece shonen. It's a shonen that has a little bit more of a adult air to it, and that I guess that takes away from the the shonen fan base a bit. I guess. But it was phenomenal. Again, like you said, great characters and a great uh, way of introducing new characters too. Like it's very, very good in my opinion. So, moving on from that, a condition called love. All right, let me start here real quick. Let me start here real quick. No more picking the same sleeper as Crystal. I don't do it on purpose. We can't do this no more. I know, I know you ain't necessarily doing it on purpose. I'm just saying. I had to speak three weeks before we did the. Uh, I know you. I, I know what you did, bro. I'm saying, damn, this episode was so good. I this this was episode of the week quality. Um, I was I was damn near on, on the verge of tears. I was like, this is beautiful. Hundred percent. Um, and even even with the understanding because so what this anime has done from the beginning was set this precedent that our main character um, or or our, our male protagonist here um, hopeless, hopelessly in love and that's just kind of how he's going to operate um, he's going to always subject himself to the worst case scenario and it's not the worst case scenario for him but he's going to do whatever it takes to make the person he cares for happy um, we've gotten that we've and, gotten, and that. We've gotten so, that so before that though I do want to say like Go ahead. What I liked about it the most was that I thought it was a surface level uh, act of kindness kind of a uh, thank you for your act of kindness kind of love because mm-hmm. he seems like a hopeless romantic, right? Like the, the guy that just falls in love with whoever's kind enough to him. That's right. how I, he felt from the beginning. And I wasn't dealing with that at first. Like I wasn't dealing with him in that particular concept. Like, like but, I said, you felt me. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. But in this particular episode, it solidified the fact that it's much more than that. And that's why it was such a great episode because the way it was delivered and honestly, such an honest and, and truly believable way that I was, I was captivated by it. Like I was completely captivated by it. It was real good. And, and, and yeah. And like where, where I was getting to was that like, we got this scenario where, like I said, I thought he was manipulative in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't feel like this is going to be a, a romantic story. And I just uh, thought he was a service level 
I, I only yeah, right. from, skim off the top type. But, type. but we get to, to this episode where we get this explanation as to why he wanted to spend this day with her so bad. Why was this day so important? And the reality is, is that this has been thought out. He thought this out a long time ago. And that's what makes it feel like the the character is written as someone who truly cares. Yes. And it's not that and, and that's what made it so important was that this had to be something that our our MC planned. It had to be something that our MC thought about or, or either write or wrote that our character thought about. And it was delivered so let's say eloquently mm-hmm. that um it it was a soft delivery, but it was impactful. It was to say that on this day they demonstrated that she was doing all these things with other people all of this day yep on on the 24th she's doing these things doing these things she's always doing these things she's not thinking necessarily about these specific scenarios she's doing these things with these people making them feel special on the 24th come the 25th it's her birthday we're trying to get to this point where they realize well they're doing true. all that stuff on the 25th by the way on her birthday on her birthday but yeah yeah okay yeah but it's the it's just the principle that like this her special day her special birthday um or her birthday she made so special important. for everybody else she made it special for everyone else but now it's time for this to be special for you and he set that aside for her making mm-hmm. make sure that she has something special for her and to me that was beautiful it made our main character just that much better yeah, a hundred percent, and and her too. Like the way the way we both get these two completely different dynamics in a way that is so. Again, I we, I think we use this word a lot today, but maybe not. We only use it with the two shows we're talking about for Spurs Talk. But it's just refreshing. It's a refreshing, different type of slice of life situation that we don't. It's not we don't get it this often. Where it's like again, these two characters are not bumbling fools. The girl mm-hmm. just has never experienced love and wants to experience it, and is trying. She's very, di- she's very direct. Very, very direct. direct. I love this. Not, she's not slightly stupid. Yeah, and trying very hard to understand uh, something she don't understand, and him who's trying to just uh, help her understand that it's more it, what what love is. It's 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 phenomenal. It's phenomenal so far. And we're seeing real time in this anime. Yes. Her learning what love is. Yes. From episode one to now, she's learning. And I love the way that she put it. And it, it sucks to me because I ain't gonna lie to you. I feel like I'm getting hit in the heart. She was like, I feel like I'm so close to understanding something. I'm like, oh, my heart. Yeah. Don't, don't say you close to understand. Just say you understand. <laughs> Just say you understand. But I get it because the build up to her truly understanding. Because it's like for us, we're like, yeah, she understand already. We're looking like she's she got it. She know what's happening, but she don't really know what's happening. And it's beautiful to see it play out this way because it's like, man, when she understands this, this finale is gonna be crazy. I'm gonna cry because with her, it's like she um, God, I had it on the tip of my tongue. She my makes it. No, it's not. It's, it wasn't you. It was just the way I, of wording I had on the tip of my tongue, and it just disappeared literally that instant. But it's the way. Oh, it's the way this is it. It's the way she on, is honest about it. Like she mm-hmm. knows she don't feel the way he does yet, but she's getting bits and pieces of it. That's like a different feeling to her that she is starting to enjoy. And when she speak about it in her inner monologues, it's it's wonderful mm-hmm. to hear it. Um, random tangent. Qu- quick, quick, quick. Random side note. But the whole thing about people not having an inner monologue. What do people think when they watch anime? Do they just think of these, like, like you know, you know what I'm talking about? You ever heard about the the people who don't have inner monologues? Like, yeah, fifty percent of the world don't have inner monologues. Like they can't talk to themselves in their head. Like, what do they think when they see shit like this? When people be doing it, and it's like, I, I just see pictures. <laughs> it's so it's so random to think about. But anyway, I, I love the I love the way she she incorporates every piece of of of, of it. What I like about it too is that when he's realizing that it's not just you that needs to do something for them. You can have stuff done for you as well. And I think right. that's the most important part to his character that he doesn't, he's never had before, which he's mentioned. You know, he never had anything where people care about him or or want him to try the food or, you know what I'm saying? Or 
or want him to have a good time or get him something nice like the scarf she got him during that date or et cetera, et cetera. It's, oh God, it's such a good show. And, and I think that's what makes this relationship so important to him, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's weird, right? But it's, it makes it so important because this person is not specifically seeking out a relationship. Yep. She's not looking for a relationship. So, and, and, and it's crazy, but hear me out. If the person ain't looking for a relationship and they find out what love is, now they truly love somebody, they probably won't think of anything else of like, I'm going to love this person. I don't know. Properly. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's kind of exciting. It's like, yo, nah, he, he probably made the right choice here. Falling in love with somebody who was not interested in him. Yep. Might have been a good decision. Yep. Because everybody else was interested in him because he's a cute guy. But they were expecting things from him and never able to reciprocate. Exactly. Insane, man. I'm, I'm interested. Okay. There are things I'm interested in for this particular show. I'm interested to see what his family background life is, like what's going on with that. And I'm interested to, yeah, no, because there's not really much entry with her because she's just kind of normal. And that's how she believes she is as well. So, which is okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. She's just a normal girl with what seems to be kind of like NPC kind of lifestyle or background anime character lifestyle, which I'm okay with. But with him, there's a lot more to him that I would like to see when it comes to his his story, his parents, his situation, everything that he got going on and, and why he thinks the way he does. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> this is this one. I'm, I'm glad you chose. Uh, you always choose some fire slice of life, bro. And this one is one of those that I'm excited to get to this. I'm excited to get to the finale of this. And 100 percent. I already know this is going to be one of the favorites for this season. Very much so. And then moving on to an unexpected favorite, one of the unexpected favorites of mine is Remaster. I truly didn't think I was going to enjoy it. I thought this was going to be a atypical, be usual bullshit, but this is fun, man. I love, like, and it's, this is just a fun show. The, well, I, let me tell you what I what I think I love about this show, and I'm I'm just saying what I think I love about it because I'm not 100 percent sold on it yet, but I know I I love I love this show, but I'm I'm talking about this specific aspect. Okay, the pacing is so fast. Yes, but it's right. Yes, you know what I mean. Yes, <laughs> I think I so mentioned it in the form too. Yeah, it's like like first episode was day one to three, and they did they was 25 years old. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it was it's like crazy episode two you know we still on day four i'm like yo what's going on here um but this show it it progressed so fast but it's, it's understandable in the context of the monsters yeah and and uh, it's the and it's the narration too that's being done it's the way everything's right. being explained it's the fact that it's day and day dubbed so it's easy to watch great dub voice acting cast and there's actual progress being made within 100%. this. Stuff. And that's what makes it so cool because it's like a lot of times when we get this kind of series, this, so, and I'm not, not to compare, it's reminiscent <laughs> of reincarnated as a slime. And I say that because Remuru's progression is linked to everyone's progression. So that's how it feels here. Oh, yes. What a great the comparison. Progress, tell. The progression is linked. So. <laughs> <laughs> when when our main progresses, everyone else progresses in a sense. When he becomes more emotionally aware to say these these human women can be helpful, there's a progression, and so everything drives the progression, and that's what makes it show kind of like so good. Oh. The progression isn't one character who's linearly progressing um, around everyone. It is that like he he's progressing everyone, even in his attempts. He's feeding them, seeing if that progresses them. He's training them, see if that progresses them. He's finding out that you got a mage here, you got a warrior here. It's actually it's it's kind of crazy <laughs> because this is this is one of those things where it's deeper than it looks and it's deeper than it portrays. Yes, that makes sense. One hundred percent. Uh, by far the best moment of the episode was the um, the uh, etchy <laughs> situation. I guess you can call it. Um, yeah. How phenomenal! What a way to do harem right. Um, right. Instead of instead of him being just some idiot surrounded by women, don't know what to do with it. He handled business. 
<laughs> and he got this triple thrust move where he's doing all kinds of shit at the same time with these learn, women. Learn that skill from the dry at. Learn, learn his skills from the dry at to, to please the many women of his of his flock. Enjoyable. Enjoy. It's okay to enjoy harem, okay? Who are you to judge? Leader Judge and Judy. I absolutely loved it though. Uh, every everything about this episode was amazing. The show is, like you just said, is deeper than than what it looks like. Very reminiscent of us reincarnated as a slime, but let me let me compare your current comparison because we got well actually by our guy that needs to talk and he said this actually came out before reincarnated mm-hmm. as a slime which is interestingly enough uh, 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 I bet most people didn't know so reincarnated as a slime got they shit from them <laughs> uh, but I digress man it, what a fun show yeah bro it's- what an absolutely fun show this so the the when did the light novel come out? The light novel of this came out in 2012, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, this is this has been around for a long time. Re- reincarnated as a slime, really bit, bit, really bit. I love it though. I'm I'm looking forward to where this is going. You got any gut checks for this particular show? What you think is going? Man. On? When we gonna progress to the city? When we gonna get to know more of the world? I don't know, man, and and I only say that because I feel like he's going to be frightening. Um, Damn, I, I, duh, I, why did I not think about that? <laughs> he's going to be a bit frightening, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that it's going to be, and I hate to say it, it's going to be another one of those things where it seems like reincarnated as a slime kind of uh, yoinked some some details from there because I feel like he's going to have to establish his own domain. Ooh. And, and I say that because yes, he has to make himself appealing to humans, yeah. and he already has humans who find him appealing. But I mean, that that take, it takes time to convince a group. You know, know what he I mean? already reproduced too, so you know it don't take long for goblins to grow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what a great show! I'm looking forward to more. Tell what's up? I'm at Polo Boy on all social media. I'm at King Teliano on all social media. You follow our social medias at Mike Check Waifu on Twitter and at Mike Check Waifu Waifu on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. And as always, Mike, 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 Check. We are now tuned into Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Is that you? Is that you? Is that you? Is that you? Is that you?